let's uh, talk about something. I'm going to show you a device I created. I've created three of these devices, and I'm going to build a scaled up version of this, greatly scaled up. Otherwise, it's going to cost a little bit of money. Um, let's talk about true anti gravity. I don't mean UFO nonsense, and I'm not talking about, you know, really harebrained wackadoodle stuff. Let's talk about true anti gravity. Spatial displacement, what weight is as far as a magnitude vector, and what actually changes weight. Spatial displacement, location, medium, and vector approach. Now, gravity is not an autonomous field modality, nor is it a thing in and of itself. That which we call gravity is actually nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. The entire universe is purely electrical. I'm going to explain to you in part my device. It has a few parts in it, and it actually resists falling. It's really fun, actually. I, I've, I've played with this thing on almost on a daily basis now for years. Another person has one of these devices in safekeeping. Let's first talk about some facts, okay? Let's first talk about weight. Weight is location-specific. It is medium specific, and let's give you some examples. It is vector specific because there are no straight lines in the universe. A curved linear approach actually changes the rate at which a device or an object accelerates towards another object, say, you know, a ship to the earth or, you know, a ship to the sun or a rock to the earth. Of course, rocks fall straight down. They don't apply a curved linear path of acceleration. Also, spatial displacement. Let's talk about location. Weight is instantaneously um, uh, alterable with instantaneous change in distance. A person that weighs 200 uh, pounds uh, here on the Earth, if I immediately throw myself a thousand miles out into space, instantaneous change in weight. Magnitudinal vector. We have, of course, an equation which gives us uh, the expression for weight but that is relative to a force acceleration to the mass. Now let's talk about um, medium. Say you got a 600 pound person. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not that big. <laughs> There's no way a little four year old girl could ever move a 600 pound person, right? He's sitting in a chair, you know, he, she can never lift him up off the ground, right? Weight, medium specific. You take that same person and you stick him in the water, a little six-year-old girl can move that person around easily. No questions asked. This is a fact. Stick that same 600-pound person on a raft, okay, able to push him around. Or in the water, able to push him around. Uh, on the raft would be spatial displacement. Now, the same little girl in the water, little six-year-old girl, say you give her a 600-pound uh, block of lead. It's going to drag her to the bottom of the pool, right? Okay. Now, let's apply displacement. You take that lead and you actually stretch it out over, uh, say, uh, 10 cubic yards. Even in water, a little six-year-old girl can move 600 pounds of lead. Spatial displacement. Vector. And then I'm going to get to the point of how these little devices work so you're able to understand. The way these devices work simply is off of a Fleming's right-hand rule of a current as far as motion, magnetism, and current. And... Uh, Gravity, of course, as we know, is not a force. It's an acceleration. If this were a rock and I let go of it, you know, a thousand feet up in the air, there is no force applied in me letting go of this rock, is there? No, there's, there certainly is not. It's an acceleration. It is absolutely no different than magnetic attraction, or that which we call magnetic attraction. And magnetic attraction is not based in magnetism, is based in dielectric voidance. It is based in centripetal convergence, literally the erasure of force and motion, increasing inertia and acceleration to a null point. Okay? So anti-gravity, or what we denotatively, you know, in our nomenclature of uh, connotative ideation, have in our head of anti-gravity is not only possible, it's quite easily possible. And it's not just possible, it's a reality. Um, Look, I'm not selling anything to anybody, but I want to explain something to you first, and then you'll be able to understand. Okay? So, A, we know that weight is instantaneously changeable 
if you change location. Me here versus a thousand miles in space, instantaneous change in weight. Okay, location. Medium, you know, you take, uh, you know, 600 pound person on the ground, there's no way basically anybody's going to move that person. Well, a six year old girl can move the same 600 pound person if you toss that person in the water. Spatial displacement. 600 pound brick of lead? No, no dice. Uh, you displace it over X number of cubic yards. You know, I could easily move 600 pounds of lead with one hand given enough spatial displacement so that the vector approach of acceleration changes over a given area such that the approach vector has been displaced. So the approaching vector has been altered by changing the spatial displacement of the center of that mass. And this is never taken into equation when it comes to physics and weight. So, since everything is electrical and gravity is not a thing in and of itself, gravity does not exist. Well, of course gravity exists. Everything falls, you know. Further. No, that's not what I mean. I mean that gravity does not exist in the absolutist sense of what we think as gravity as an autonomous field modality apart from dielectricity, electricity, and magnetism. It does not exist. It is like we have... It is as stupid to think that gravity is a thing in and of itself as it is to think that ice is something wholly different than water and steam. It's all the same crap. All exactly the same stuff. Retroductively, through intellectual analysis, able to deduce by reading Faraday, Steinmetz, Tesla, Eric P. Dollard, Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, Dr. Oleg D. Oleg D. J. Oleg D. D. Jefeminko, specifically uh, Oliver Heaviside, too, in his notes on gravity, that since everything is so far as current, magnetism, dielectricity, and the way AC motors work, we are able to apply right-hand rules uh, we're able to apply perpendicular force, current, and motion vectors to the reduction and eventual elimination of gravitational acceleration. How is that possible? Fleming's right-hand rule. Motion, magnetism, excuse me, trying to twitch a multiple one finger at a time, current. Motion, magnetism, current. Okay? Point of acceleration here. So let's point motion here. By applying a magnetic field vector here, perpendicular to the point of acceleration, changing the vector of approach, which is autonomous to the device, but actually a steerage, of course, and applying a small current, not a great current, in these devices that I created. These devices do work, by the way. I'm not selling you anything. Okay? I'm not selling this device. I'm not even selling my book where I write about this fact. It's free. By applying those things, a simple battery, more than one magnet, a deflector, and changing the magnetic vector of using the right-hand rule, Fleming's right-hand rule, as, a, as applied to a gravitational acceleration, we are able to, outside the corpus of what we normally think of uh, the right-hand rule and uh, Fleming's left-hand rule of uh, current, electricity, magnetism, uh, and apply that to gravitational acceleration because gravity is purely electrical and it is not a thing in and of itself. Like I said, gravity is nothing other than incoherent. What's incoherent mean? Well, if you don't know what the term coherent and incoherent mean, then there's something wrong with it. You should have learned that crap in school. Incoherent light, okay, versus coherent light, like a laser, okay? There's no difference between a light and a laser. A 5-watt light you know, light like this and a 5 watt laser is 5 watts is 5 watts is 5 watts. So what's the radical difference? This, this light isn't even that bright. But a 5 watt laser will burn the back of my eye out. It'll burn my ass. It'll burn my skin. You know, I can freaking light matches with it. What's the difference? 5 watts is 5 watts is 5 watts. The difference is the big C. Coherency. So what we think of magnetic acceleration is not based in magnetism. It's based in centripetal convergence. It is purely dielectric. Everything in the universe is fields. Fields are not particles, and gravity is not an autonomous field modality. Gravity, if aliens from a distant world were to land and they were to hear some of our science, I mean, they laugh their asses off. What, what, what you stupid humans think that gravity is something that 
Gravity's electrical, you stupid humans. I mean, what's wrong with you idiots? You're obviously not that, uh, you know, not that intelligent or wise. I mean, that's exactly what they would do. <laughs> so, applying the right-hand rule, able to change the motion vector of acceleration, which is dielectric centripetal convergence. In these devices that I created, I've been playing with these devices almost on a daily basis for almost a year and a half now. You also apply a curved linear vector. As someone once told me that I actually handled this device, and I never thought of that that way, he was actually trying to use it like this, and you could feel it like this, but he said, I can really feel it when I make an approach vector like landing an airplane. You know, an airplane lands like this. It's like, yeah, you're exactly right. Actually, if you do that, except at a curved linear approach like this, which every, there's no straight lines in the universe. Everything is curved linear. As you can see underneath the ferro cell, you know, it's the phylotaxis of a centripetal convergence and divergence. The entire universe is electrical. So the notion that um, application of machines relative uh, to gravitational acceleration is something different than electrical systems is an absurdity. I know one thing for certain. If I kick the bucket tomorrow, I know one thing for certain. That within a hundred years, humanity, if it's smart enough to survive itself, will figure out what I've just told you. And they will have the government probably already. I'm not a conspiracy nut at all. I can't stand conspiracy nuts. That doesn't mean that there actually aren't a few conspiracies that are certainly to be true. You know, just uh, like they say, that just because you think people are out to get you doesn't mean that they're not, right? Uh, <laughs> conspiracy theory nuts are, are nuts, of course. There are obviously, out of the mountain of stupid, insane, harebrained, nonsensical conspiracies, there are obviously some true conspiracies. Every government is undeniably always hiding stuff from its, uh, its peoples. Whether they're hiding this sort of technology, I'm not going to speculate. I know people are going to ask me that question. But I can tell you one thing. That after reading all these texts on field theory and, uh, you know, right-hand rules of current, magnetism, and motion, and simply applying that towards gravitational acceleration, what I've done is I've actually changed the magnetic vector constant of this in approach to gravitational acceleration such that the weight, and weight of course is nothing, weight is only relative to location, medium, uh, vector, and displacement. Location, medium, vector, and displacement. Can you remember those four things? Because weight will change instantaneously and immediately with a change of location, um, uh, excuse me, location, uh, vector, medium, and displacement. And by actually changing the uh, magnetic current perpendicular to the rate of approach, this device actually decelerates as I increase acceleration and dropping it towards the point of acceleration, obviously pointing it down. And one of the amazing discoveries that I found in messing with this device basically a year ago is that it seemed to be three times as powerful. And I had a, a thing in my head like, whoa, I bet I know what this is. It's like, why is this device... Look at my eye if you think I'm lying. Okay? I had an idea in my mind that why is this working so much better? And I went to check a, a chart as far as where is the location of the uh, moon. And the sun is down here, and I looked at the chart, and I was up here at the top of the Earth, relatively, right? And the moon was immediately between. So when this device actually worked the best, and I wait every month for that time to approach, is that when, not when the moon is over here or here and the sun's down here, relatively speaking, but when the sun is down here and the moon is down here and the Earth is underneath me, this device, I can't quantify it as being three times more powerful, but it kind of seems that way because it's fascinating as far as how radically different it is. So, everything I said in this video is true. This device does work. Um, obviously, is it going to fall to Earth if I let it go? Yeah, it certainly is. But what you actually feel in holding it and dropping it towards a point of acceleration is rather fascinating. I've actually never had a toy. This is a toy. I, this is not a toy, of course. Something that I invented myself that I, you know, mess around with every day because it's so neat. That's why I've actually worn these two out. I mean, I've, I've handled them to death. But I'm going to build a mock-up using some larger magnets and some uh, larger flat coils. And there is a power source. And it's very tiny. It's right underneath here. It's just a watch battery, actually. <laughs> it's only a watch battery. 
2032 battery. Um, so anyway, I thought some people would like to know that. Uh, but if you, I don't care if you believe that this device works or not, however it does, but I want you to believe one thing for certain, and that is undeniable, is that gravity is purely electrical. It's electrical! Gravity is not an autonomous thing in and of itself. Gravity does not exist. It is nothing other than an accelerative modality of dielectric acceleration. It is purely electrical, dielectric and magnetic. Gravity is not something several. Over here we got dielectricity. Over here we got magnetism. Over here we got electricity. Down here we have no. Mother Nature doesn't work off that uh, crack smoking hippie twaddle. What Mother Nature doesn't deal and doesn't play cards and that sort of crap. This is a stupid human idea that we have. Okay, and it's unreal. It's not true. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Lux Everitas.